Let's now introduce ourselves to the idea of a differential equation. And as we'll see, differential equations are super useful for modeling and simulating phenomena and understanding how they operate. Let's just think about, or at least look at, what a differential equation actually is. So let's, here's an example of a differential equation. If I were to write that the second derivative of y plus two times the first derivative of y is equal to three times y, this right over here is a differential equation. Equation. Another way we could write it, if we said that y is a function of x, we could write this in function notation. The second derivative of our function with respect to x plus two times the first derivative of our function is equal to three times our function. Or if we wanted to use the Leibniz notation, we could also write the second derivative of y with respect to x plus two times the first derivative of y with respect to x is equal to three times y. All three of these equations are really representing the same thing. They're saying, okay, can I find functions where the second derivative of the function plus two times the first derivative of the function is equal to three times the function itself? That the solution to a differential equation is a function or a class of functions. It's not just a value or a set of values. And it's important to contrast this relative to algebraic equation that you're familiar with. It might look something like x squared plus three x plus two is equal to zero. The solutions to this algebraic equation are going to be numbers or a set of numbers. We can solve this as going to be x plus two times x plus one is equal to zero. So x could be equal to negative two or x could be equal to negative one. The solutions here are numbers or a set of values that satisfy the equation. Now how, let's, let's make that a little bit more tangible. What would a solution to something like any of these three, which really represent the same thing, what would a solution actually looks like? And that there is often more than one solution or there's a whole class of functions that could be a solution. One solution is y1 of x is equal to e to the negative 3x. And I encourage you to pause this video right now and find the first derivative of y1 and the second derivative of y1 and verify that it does indeed satisfy this differential equation. So I'm assuming you've had a go at it. So let's work through this together. So that's y1. So the first derivative of y1, well this is going to be, let's see, we just have to do the chain rule here. Derivative of negative three x with respect to x is just negative three. And the derivative of e to the negative three x with respect to negative three x is just e to the negative three x. And if we take the second derivative, y of y1, this is equal to, same exact idea, derivative of this is negative three times negative three is going to be nine e to the negative three x. And now we can just substitute these values into the differential equation or these expressions into the differential equation to verify that this is indeed going to be true for this function. So let's verify that. So we first have what the second derivative of y. So that's that term right over there. So we have nine e to the negative three x plus two times the first derivative. So that's going to be two times this right over here. So it's going to be plus negative six e to the negative three x. Notice I just took the two times the first derivative it needs to be equal to, if y1 does indeed satisfy the differential equation, this needs to be equal to three times y. Well, three times y is three times e to the negative three x. Let's see if that indeed is true. So these two terms right over here, nine e to the negative three x minus six e to the negative three x, that's gonna be three e to the negative three x, which is indeed equal to three e to the negative three x. So y1 is indeed a solution to this differential equation. But as we'll see, it is not the only solution to this differential equation. For example, let's say let's say y2 is equal to e e to the x is also a solution to this differential equation. And I encourage you to pause the video again and verify that it's a solution. So assuming you've had a go at it, so the first derivative of this, this is pretty straightforward, is e to the x. The second derivative here is also e to the x. And so if I have, so the second derivative, it's going to be e to the x plus two times e to the x is indeed going to be equal to three times e to the x. This is absolutely going to be true. e to the x plus two to the x is three e to the x. So y2 is also a solution to this differential equation.